Greetings everyone, my name is Joey, and I had some people asking me if I would make a video of uh, my, my G.I. Joe terrain project that I built. And I figured I would, I was going to kind of do that anyway for myself, but uh, it's nice to document this. So the whole project took me about seven months to, to create all of this. It's going to be my winter project that you know, lasted in the summer, as they, they always do. I'll do some overalls here and then uh, I'll kind of zoom in to each individual area. I sculpted it primarily out of the insulation foam board. Uh, you can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot for it's like twenty dollars for a eight foot by four foot sheet and I find it's pretty pretty awesome for carving into like rock textures. You can kind of see how that turns out. I got some jets down there. I'm going to have those hung above the battlefield eventually. G.I. Joe Command Center. And you got the Terradrome Mountain in the distance. Very menacing. The raised flag that I, I built that about a year ago. My wife found this really awesome guy named Randy on Facebook and we'd become good friends and he sold me this really awesome flag and then I built the lower levels for it HasLab G.I. Joe Sky Striker that thing is awesome and these are some of the figures that came with that HasLab project you got the Scarlet Ripcord Night Force I'm one of these people that I uh, I mix the modern and the classic Joe figures. I don't care. I think if it looks cool, it looks cool. I got the command center up here. Spirit, probably my favorite uh, my favorite of the GI Joe team. Everyone knows Artan's the best though. So for the lower levels, this first bay is kind of my larger vehicle bay. I've got the Night Rhino and the APC. There's the October Guard hanging out. I've got a brig over here that I made. It's a stair. It's a spare door that I I had from an, uh, a terror drone. It's Tomax or Zaymont inside there now. pointing the way this way all right well this way to the barracks Joe's work hard they gotta play hard so the posters I just had to choose classic posters from the 80s printed them up to scale these arcade machines these are really cool they actually work and light up and do the whole deal That's fun. I have the high score in Tetris, but Shipwreck is coming in with a close second. Eventually I'm gonna make some cards for them so they can be playing poker or something there, but for now they're just enjoying some family-friendly colas. Come over here to the Shark Bay, safety first with the uh, fire extinguisher there. So then we got the Shark Bay in the back. Everyone's scrambling for their individual sharks. You got a shipwreck over here. It looks like he's about to get shivved by some hydro wipers. That's, that's probably not good. These lights are really cool. I got these from Amazon. I think they're around $20. They're self-adhesive. And uh, they do change color. So they came with this really handy remote here. And I can just... Uh, red alert or maybe we're doing stealth mode or you can set and program this thing to do all sorts of stuff maybe have a rave I usually just keep it on the the brightest one though and then we'll swing it around to the other side so here you can see the back half of that larger vehicle bay
doc taking care of repeater here in the med bay. That is an x-ray machine that I have behind him. It does light up. I don't have it on at the moment. Eventually I want to make some little x-rays of some of the G.I. Joes to put on there. So they're all backlit. 3D printed some accessories over there. That brings us to the motor pool. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in here, and you can kind of see it through the windows here, we've got the motor pool. Take a peek in there. What's going on? Here in the motor pool. I 3D printed the barrels and the uh, tool kit in the back there. I also 3D printed this G.I. Joe logo for the side and then I painted it because I don't know how to print in different colors yet. And you got the side up here. That's all normal. And then the back half of the shark hanger with my favorite version of Deep Six there. This one. You got the other Deep Six over there. And you can kind of see the battlefield looming in the distance. <clears throat> so we'll go take a closer look. So this is the section that I most recently completed. Uh, it's a resin pour for the beach landing. And uh, we were going to have it a lot deeper. I wanted the water to come up a little higher on the rocks, but we grossly underestimated how much resin we would actually need. This is about two gallons that we used, and it's about, uh, I'd say, almost a half inch deep. That turned out really nice, though. Got an eel boarding party there. Quick Kick is kicking Monkey Wrench into the ocean. As well he should. And you got the whale landing party. I think uh, he's looking for change on the beach there. That's fun. Terradrome Mountain looming in the distance. So again, this is all just insulation foam board that I have carved up and then I've added sculpt a mold to give it more texture and kind of fill in the, the blanks. And then the, the green turf is like that Woodland Scenics um, shakeable stuff. Yeah, Ramar over here. It's a custom I made a while ago. Still a Cobra Slave. Destro's Weather Dominator. Didn't come with a seat, so I had to 3D print one, but anyway. So here's Terradrome Mountain. This is the first piece that I made of all the terrain. Start big, I guess. But I wanted it to be the kind of the centerpiece and do everything around it. Now I do have a, it is recessed in here and I have the terror drum sitting on a lazy Susan. So this does, this does rotate fairly easily and we have access to all the different uh, bays. A hooded Cobra Commander and looks like Dr. Mindbender hanging out up there. And we can do a close, close view here. Again, that's just gravel that I've glued to the uh, the terrain for texture, and then I painted over it for a kind of consistency. Let's see Destro and the Baroness there, power couple. Take a look at the G.I. Joe base here. You can kind of see all this rock is literally just hacking at the insulation foam and then adding some sculptal mold on the front to give it texture and then lots and lots and lots of layers of dry brushing. These stickers 
Uh, these are aftermarket stickers on the base here. These are from Toy Hacks. I, actually do, I, I just absolutely love the quality of their, their stuff. So I like to use those. You can kind of see more of that in here. Looks like they're plotting a trip to Cobra Island. But these are all those aftermarket stickers and they are just really awesome quality. Now I tried to make this as modular as possible. So all these pieces are interchangeable. Um, each of these are on sections of plywood and insulation board. So things like the mountains in the back, those can be picked up and moved elsewhere. Um, same thing with the helicopter landing pad over there. You can just pick it right up if you want to change it, switch it up. Same thing with all of these sections. These are all, all sectional and modular. The idea was to make it easy if and when we ever moved and if I just wanted to switch up the display. But that takes us inside the Joe base itself. This wire here, the fence, the chain link is made of screen door mesh that I got at Lowe's for super cheap. And then the barbed wire, that is just jewelry making wire that I just coiled. And it's all glued together with UV resin, which is like magic. That stuff is awesome. And you can see inside the Joe base here, it's got ramps. I 3D printed those steps with files I got off of Thingiverse. And then this is just more sculpt -a mold and 3D or sculpt -a mold and that, that foam board that you just carve up. Naga hide, counting off the days in his jail cell there. Tiger Force looks like it's having a meeting. This was the Cobra rifle range that I painted G.I. Joe green and repurposed. More 3D steps that I printed. Also 3D printed that um, Checkpoint Alpha. zoom in and that's what the battlefield looks like from low lights view. It's pretty hectic. And that's it. This is my G.I. Joe battlefield terrain project and my raised flag. It took me about seven total months. And um, yeah. Uh, something I've wanted to do since I was a little kid. I saw someone playing with their G.I. Joes on their dad's train set and I thought that looked awesome and I've wanted to do it ever since so I'm glad to finally get to do it. If anyone has any questions feel free to ask. Uh, the community has been very helpful for me uh, to kind of get me where I am and answer all my questions so I would be more than happy to impass that knowledge to others. And that's it. Thanks for watching and enjoy.